All right, this is a video for Monday, October 4th and Tuesday, October 5th. It's a combination of the two days and what we've been practicing or doing. Okay, I'm going to skip over uh, this earlier stuff, which we did in class. Um, just uh, we talked about in class, what's the job or purpose of a ratio? And that job or purpose of a ratio is to make sure that two numbers have a relationship and we're going to use that relationship to help us solve problems. So that purpose of a ratio is to show or demonstrate relationship between some numbers, okay? Um, so uh, in here, I'm just going to work through some of these problems. I'm going to go probably at a very quick pace. And the reason I'm going to go at a quick pace is because you can always come back and listen uh, to me on these. So a salsa recipe requires diced onions and tomatoes in a ratio of one to three. So, uh, whoops, I should uh, read the rest. Jason wants to make a larger batch of salsa for a summer party he's having. If he uses six diced onions, how many diced tomatoes did he use? Use a model to solve. So the ratio is onions to tomatoes. And I'm going to show this in this table, but I'm also going to show it on the double number line. What do we know? We know that it's onions to tomatoes, so that's one, two, three, okay? And we want to know if, uh, how many, we, uh, if he uses six onions, right, uh, what that would look like, okay? So we could do one, and we can just keep increasing uh, uh, to find out then how many tomatoes he has. So we could do one, uh, two. Whoops. Uh, if I have two onions, I'm going to need three more tomatoes. So I'm going to need um, six tomatoes, right? If I need three more or a third onion, I'm going to need three more tomatoes. Four. And what I'm going to do actually is give myself a little space because I will need it. And you can go ahead and do this however you want. Three, nine, right? And then I need one more onion. Four, twelve. 5, whoops, 15, 6, there it is. That's the one I'm looking for, right? Because I'm looking for, he uses 6 diced onions. We're looking for how many tomatoes. So that's an increase to 18, okay? Um, and a double number line would look very similar to this. Onions, tomatoes, I start with 0 and 0. And I would, again, think about how if my onions starts at one and my tomatoes at three if i get a new onion right i'm going to get three new excuse me tomatoes so i'm just going to continue uh, to do this just it looks a lot like whoops um a lot like what i was doing to the left there um maybe you like one method over the other but 18 onions and i'm going to make sure to write this down because that's the answer okay 18 onions Mrs. Zigobauer reads two books for every five weeks. How long will it take Mrs. Zigobauer to read 100 books? Whoa. So in the last one, we when we take a look at this, right, uh, this works for this because it's small, right? I can just go up by one, 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 three, 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 and three. However, we have to do we have to have a much more efficient way to do this. And so what we should recognize is what did it take for us to get to here, right? What did it take to get there? Can we skip all of this, right? And we did this once, twice, three, four, five, and six times it took us to, to get there, right? Six of these one onions and three tomatoes. We multiply by six. Do the same thing here to get that. Okay, and that method that I just wrote there in red is what we got to use kind of moving forward, okay? So Mrs. Zigobar read two books for every five weeks. Two books, books, weeks. All right, I'm going to do a double number line in this one. Zero books is zero weeks, right? So that means that for two books, we have five weeks. And again, I am not going to keep going by two, four, six, eight, because I need a hundred books. That's going to be somewhere, you know, way over there, right? And that's not an efficient way for us to do this. So I want you to think about what does it take to get from two up to a hundred? Like we went from one to six. How do I get from, and I'm going to just eliminate some of the extra stuff here. How do I get to from two to a hundred?
However I get up there is the same I'm going to get from 5 to whatever, right? 2 to 100. 2 to 100. And that is, it takes 50 times for me to do this. it would be a lot of lines for us to draw. So if I increase by 50 times there, I'm going to increase by 50 times here. 5 times 50 is 250. Do that math on your own. A sample of orange paint uses three drops of yellow for four drops of red. If a five-gallon bucket uses 88 parts of red, how many drops of yellow are needed? Okay, so orange to yellow. Oh, what's happening here? Um, zero. And we're just going to draw that out, right? Zero to zero. And it takes three drops of orange and four drops of yellow. How do I get to... Um, oh, not yellow. I'm sorry, to make orange, I need three drops of... Oh, Mr. Crone, going a little too fast, not taking your time. Draw this in there the right way. Takes three drops of yellow and four drops of red, doesn't it? I'm sorry about that. And so how do I get now 88 parts of red? Ooh, how do I get there? 88 divided by four. How many fours go into eight? Two. So I subtract eight minus eight is zero. Drop an eight down. Um, here, how many fours go into eight? Another two. I multiply by 22. So I'm gonna multiply by 22. 22 times three. 22 times 3 is the same as 20 times 3 plus 3 times 3. 20 times 3 is 60. 3 times 3 is 9. I get, wait a second, I messed something up. Sorry about that. That's a 2. 2 times 3, there we go. That's 6 for a total of 66. 66 um, yellow. 66 drops. Make sure we answer the question. Okay. At the concession stand on Friday night, they sold five hamburgers for every hot dog. Ham, hot dog. All right, they sold five hamburgers for every four hot dogs. If they sold 60 hamburgers, how do I jump up to 60? Well, I'm gonna multiply by 12. If I multiply by 12, I'm gonna multiply by 12 here for 48 hot dogs, 48 hot dogs. The ratio of girls to the boy in a swimming club was two to four. All right, now this is kind of day two. This is Tuesday. This is going to be a new game. Um, we got to do some changes, and, and you'll see why as we go through this. So I'm going to go back to kind of what we were doing before, nice and slow, show every step. Ratio of girls to boys. So girls to boys is what to what? Two to four. If there are 13 girls, how many boys are in the club? Now watch as I go up. Four, eight, six, 12, right? I have two more girls. Eight for a total of 16 boys. We need a little bit more room. 10 girls. I have 20 boys. I have two more girls for 12. And that lets me at 24. And I have to go one more time. And I have 14 girls, and I have 26 boys. No, I messed up. Sorry, that's 28. I went by 2 because I was doing 2 up above. There's a problem. The problem is I want to know what it is for 13 girls, right? So I go over here, and I say, whoa, we skipped 13, didn't we? I can't figure out what that number is. Right? How do I get there? So what we talked about is there's two methods to do this. Um, and I'm going to talk about, the I think, the more preferred method right now, and then I'll show you an alternative. Okay. When we go back here, one of the things that maybe can be helpful for us is if we recognize back here that we can actually find the in-between. Right? Instead of two girls, I can reduce that. For every one girl, I have two boys. Right? I'm cutting, in this case, stuff in half, right? For if I had two girls, right? And if I drew even a little picture of girls and girls, and then I did 
We had four boys, 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 boys. All right, two girls to four boys. Notice I can put them into a group of one girl and two boys. And that's what I have here. How has that helped me? Because now I can go up by ones if I want to. I could do one, two, three, five, seven, nine. I wouldn't do this normally, 11, 12, 13. And then this goes up two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, <gasps> answer is 26. Again, if I go back to what I talked about earlier, what's the quicker way to do this? Multiply by, in this case, 13, multiply by 13, okay? Now, that's really, I think, the best and most preferred way to multiply and to do that. Uh, some students even pointed out, hey, what if 13 is between 12 and 14? What's exactly between 24 and 28? Oh, it's 26. Not a, it doesn't always work out beautiful, but it worked out today. All right, let's try this again. Um, a recipe calls for 24 ounces of oil and 6 ounces of vinegar. Oil, vinegar, zero, zero. Draw this out. 24 ounces of oil, 6 ounces of vinegar. So 24 to 6. Jasmine is making dressing with 9 ounces of vinegar. So if I doubled this, I would get 12 ounces of vinegar and I'd get 48 ounces of oil. My problem is... I needed nine. All right, so what was our method, right? What do we have to do? Since this is in between, let's break this down. Three, 12. Now I can do three, six, nine, 12, 24, 36. Three times three is nine. Three times 12 is 36. 36 ounces of oil. Oops, ounce, uh, ounces, sorry about that. Ounces, okay, all right. Helen is training for an upcoming race. On Monday, she ran eight laps around the track, which equals two miles. On Wednesday, she ran 20 laps. How many miles did Helen run on Wednesday? All right, let's start to pick up this pace a little bit. Laps, miles, zero, zero. All right, what was hers? Hers was uh, eight laps and two miles. So eight laps, two miles. And if I, again, just to help reinforce, if I could, if I'm skipping, that's 16 laps, four miles. And if I do one more, that's going to be 24, um, and this will be six, right? And I notice I skipped my 20, right? I skipped my 20. So if I go back here, I have to... I could do four, eight, 12, whoops, I don't wanna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about what does it take, so four and one, what does it take for me to do 20 laps, right? So I'm gonna multiply by five. So I multiply by five to get five laps, okay? Um, I'm gonna skip that and see, I think really that kind of starts to get um, uh, I don't think there's anything else in here that I would want to do. I think uh, maybe a tougher one like this where it has a little bit larger numbers could be helpful. Last Saturday I ran 32 laps around the track, 4 miles. So it's very similar to what we just did. Um, that is true. That's how it works, by the way. So if I have 0 laps, 0 miles, right? 32 laps which is four miles, so 32 and four. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break this down to 16 and two, um, and I did fifth, uh, 16, and I'm gonna actually break it down to one and eight. Wait a second, I messed something up in my numbers, didn't I? Eight laps, oh, no, that's not right. 32 laps, which equals four miles. 32 is four miles. Ah, that's not right. Oh, this is a different track. This is not a normal track. Sorry, that's why I was like, uh, I was very confused, right? So what does it take? A normal track is four miles. So what does it take for me to get up to 56? What do I do? 
and multiply by 7. Multiply by 7. Okay? If you have any other questions, please let me know.